We are at the Lazy G Ranch, Howard Graham's ranch here. Howard, we're just so thrilled for them, this invitation, and this morning, I know, uh, Yvonne, was, uh, you and Charlie were dressed by what time? Oh, let's see, we were ready. We got up early because we were looking forward to it. We were ready by 9, yes, to come. We could have left at 8. <laughs> <laughs> we were so anxious, you know, to see that uh, month-old baby mule. And um, Yvonne put uh, Cookie's yeah. denim dress on, and we were ready to come. We we're just so sorry that uh, Barbara had a doctor's appointment this morning, and we couldn't meet her. But we're looking forward to seeing that baby mule and the white mule. Good. I'm I'm looking forward to showing them to you. I'm 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 just delighted that the that the mules have been a focus focal point, and so many things about mules are not on not known. People don't understand them, but they're really really fascinating animals. So I'm delighted just beautiful and I said it's almost like taking a trip to the Smoky Mountains some of the view just your view but of course uh, Howard picked out this property and I know he and Barbara were they have worked so hard on this I know and then they've got a helper a Judy out there Judy Colburn uh, let me just say something that's off the cuff here before we go into whatever else we're going to do. I was impressed by how neat and tidy a mule ranch can be. Good grief. Everything in here has just got its own place, and it's as neat and tidy and pretty as you can be. We even saw the, look like the Longhorns knew to get in a row down there when we came up the hill. But Howard and his son Chip and all of them are just wonderful people, and it's a pleasure to know them, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some more of the mules and the cows. Miss Yvonne? Well, I just want to say I appreciate so much getting to come up here and see your place. I should have known it would be just lovely and everything up to par, you. knowing you and your wonderful son and, uh, and all your family. Thank you very much. Okay. Howard, it's just a show place, and I was surprised when you said you bought this property and every building you have done yourself. Your home is just so charming. It's wonderful. Well, thank you. We came up, just, I just walked up here in the woods many years ago and picked me out a spot and thought that would make a good home spot, and I've been working hard on it ever since. And you said that was about 30 years ago? 1977, we moved in. Oh, Howard, you have done one fantastic job, but we were just so anxious um, because of all the mules and the attention of mules in Walker County to um, be able to come up here and see some live mules. Well, I'm glad you could come. Most, you know, most people don't, <clears throat> most people hear the word mule and they hear the word donkey and they don't even realize that there's a difference between a mule and a donkey. But a mule is actually a hybrid. Uh, you. It takes a female horse and a male donkey to get a mule offspring, and they, they are sterile. There have actually been about 70 documented cases where mare mules actually had foals, but there's never been a case documented where a mule actually sired a foal. But male mules are, are always, they're, they're always gilded because they, even though they are hybrid and even though they're sterile, they don't realize that that's the case. So they would have some, exhibit some characteristics that you wouldn't want. Mm -hmm. But these mules get a lot of, a lot of, half of their characteristics probably come from the donkey side. Howard, we have so looked forward to getting out here because you told me you had a one month old a little foal, a little mule, one month old, and we could not wait to get here. <laughs> and um, now Coda, Ellie, had this mule, but now the father is not on the farm. Tell us about that. Uh, Ellie, is a, Ellie is a registered quarter horse mare, and she's bred to a donkey, a male donkey. This donkey's name is really done it and he's named for his color because he's a dun color which is very close to Ellie's color. Ellie is what's called a grula and uh, Coda's sire is a dun but, and they're very similar colors. The difference would be that the dun would be a lighter tend more toward the yellow color with not quite as much black in it and the, the sire is in Montana oh. 
we breed we breed our mares artificially here on here on the place. Our vet comes out and and assists us with that, and then we we actually fold our coats here in the barn. And I was asking you um, about the mining mules. They're so small in stature, and you said most of those were from out west. A lot of those mules came from out west. That's true. One of the things that happens when you're breeding hybrids is you, you never know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, and so they were breeding small donkeys to mares, and their offspring would be small. And so that was the goal to get to get the smaller mules. Now, we have one mule. We have a white mule. His name is Spirit. He's in a different pasture. Now, I can show him to you. And he is about the size of the, that those mining mules would have been. Oh. His, his dam was almost as big as this mare, but his sire was smaller, and he turned out to be a lot smaller. So he's very comparable to the size that they would have been using in the mines. Oh, I can't wait to see. Did you say the name was Spirit? Spirit. Oh, I can't wait to see that. It takes, one. It takes them a while to learn because they, they don't, they're not born knowing what a fence is ah. or a restraint. And so you have to introduce them to that gradually because they hurt themselves. Oh. And they, they learn fast, but they have to go through a process to learn. Isn't that sweet? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, just let them play. That mule is posing. Oh. It didn't, didn't take, didn't take. With his horse. Ellie and her month-old colt, which is a mule, named Coda. Look at her enjoying being out of the pasture. I mean, out of the fence. Oh, but right back to her mother, Ellie, or his mother, Ellie, Coda is a boy. Look at Coda enjoy romping around. Call the Larry's right here. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Oh, he is so cute. Look at him. <laughs> oh. This it this property is so beautiful. Howard bought the property and has put every building on here himself. The stables. Look at that. Look at Kona go. <laughs> oh, how cute. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> but she bounced right up. Kona. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Winnie Mucker, Nevada. She's a, she's a Winnie Mucker, Nevada. Oh, let me get this again. Howard, let's say that again. Now this, the, I hate this? there. Oh, <laughs> I don't have any it's, apples. It's, uh, I got this story. Let me get rid of this apple. Yeah. Uh, this is Scooter. 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 He's enjoying his apple this morning. Scooter thinks she owns this place. Oh. Here, Winnie. So we, we call this mare Winnie. She's actually a Mustang. She came off of the range in Winnemucca, Nevada. She was part of the government's program to keep the range from being overpopulated with wild horses. So we got her, and she is actually the mother of these two mules, the sire, the donkey, was in Callahan, Colorado. So we made it a Colorado Jack with this mare at two different times, obviously. There's two years difference in their age. Scooter was first, female. Scoot was second, male. Oh, they are precious. If you, in, in terms of mules, you often hear people use the term uh, match pair. This is what you, this is what a lot of the folks try to do particularly in work mules. They want two mules that look exactly alike, and these are about as close as you get. He's got one little white spot on him, and his nose is a little lighter than hers, but other than that, they're very similar. Oh, they look identical to me. 
But now um, this one was she. She said you said a wild Mustang. Did you? Did they have to? Or you, did you uh, did. train her? I trained you. I did. It was that was quite a process. But but it but I I probably learned more than she did. But we we got it done, and now I can put my kids, my grandkids on her or whatever. She's just she's a perfect lady now. Oh my goodness. So Howard. After you got her and trained her, then you uh, you had her bred. Right. See the government brand on her neck? They freeze brand. See that? U, that's U.S. with a number. <laughs> well, it just says U.S. and then the numbers are Arabic. Arabic? Yeah, I think her number is 0663 or something like that. I, I don't really read that very well. But well why would they, they do that, Howard? They use symbols because <clears throat> in numbers you have, like on an 8, you'll have two small circles, or, or on a 5, you got a circle on the bottom and things like that. And when you brand that, that tends to blot that out. So they like to use things that are open, and so oh. it, it's much more effective to use a symbol that doesn't have circles in it. I see. I see. Because they're distinctive, and they last longer, and they don't, they don't blot out. Okay. The hair turns white. It actually kills the pigment, in the, and the hair turns white. After they're branded. Right. And that's, why, that's how you see that showing up. You see that showing up white on her. I was just showing the tack room. Each each animal has their own head stall, and uh, all the each animal has their different saddle because fit's very important. Uh, we have harness over here on this wall. We work a little bit in harness. Here's some of my riding. Here's some of my riding stuff over here. Howard, this is wonderful. What a great job you've done here. Thank you. I know you're so proud. We built this barn on this. This old building was actually at the bottom of the mountain, and we moved this old building up here because I, it, it's, it, was a, it was a real old building, and I just kind of wanted to save it. So that, that part of the barn over there is, is, is a really old building that we just moved up here and then added the barn onto it. Uh, Howard, now this is uh, the room uh, that you stay in when your, some, your mare is about to fold. When we get close enough to folding it that we think it's going to be within a relatively short period of time, as in a few days, I think in this case we spent about five days down here waiting. But we stay down here at night and so we can, we can look out this window and observe without causing them to be, the mare to be uncomfortable. A mare is one of only about two animals in the world that actually can control labor. A mare can start to go into labor. And if she felt threatened, now she can't turn it off if her water's broken, but obviously uh -huh. if the labor process has started, she can just shut it down. So consequently, it's very difficult to see one have a fold because if they know that you're watching them and they are the center of attention, they'll just turn it off. So well, you're interrupting them. That's right. We have to kind of remove ourselves from that situation so they'll kind of happen naturally. And so that's why we get up here and try to observe about this window. Have you, did you see a plan like this? Did you know to develop it like this or? Well, I've seen a lot of other people's facilities and so I just thought based on all the things that, I've, that I had seen and what I had uh -huh. here, I just came up with my own idea to take, borrow some from a lot of other different people's ideas. But then you said for some of them you had been sleeping on the barn floor. Early on, we didn't have this room, <laughs> and in order to accomplish that, we'd just stack us some hay bales out here in this outside room and sleep on the hay. Uh, to be nearby, but this is a great setup because you actually put an air mattress down and slept in that tack room, too. Uh, but this is a big you know, improvement. I think a lot of people who will be watching this on television uh, wonder the same thing. How did you get the name for the little donkey, or the mule? I just started thinking about it. We usually don't name them right off because usually something happens that causes us to think of a name. But in this case, <laughs> I was just thinking one day, and Coda is actually the name of a Disney character. Oh. Coda was a bear in one of the Disney films. And the word translates to friend, friend and companion. So I just thought that that would be a, a, good, a good name for my Mew, who will be my friend and companion. And it, it was male in content, I thought, so yeah. it fit. Yeah. 
I'm, uh, I'm glad I asked because yeah. that, that's a, a very interesting answer, too. Well, I, then this is a beautiful place. Good gracious, Howard. I, I don't know why you ever go home I, if you have another <laughs> home beside this one. I just stay out here, I think, the whole time. Oh, yeah. We do. Thank you. We yeah. do. Oh, yeah, he, he does. Goodness. Uh, with all of his animals. I was just saying that this was an answer for a prayer for me because I told Charlie the other day if we lived out, I would want a mule. And so here I am. After this year of all the talk and we have fallen in love with these mules in Walker County, it was a wonderful idea, and I think everybody's thinking about it now. We love our mules in Walker County. And, the, and this is so, so great to have an opportunity to get some footage of live mules, Howard. <laughs> And Charlie uh, yeah. just need to move out somewhere, and I'll just I'll just loan you a mule, and there you can have we'll one. Have, we'll be in business. That's good. I will remember that. Charlie, <laughs> Thank I, you. I was talking a while ago about about the disposition of the mules and how they get a bad rap for being stubborn, and it's just a very high degree of intelligence. And I'll give you an example. A horse will break in a feed room, and a horse will sit stand there and eat feed till it's absolutely sick. It'll founder. A mule can break in that same feed room, and the mule will eat just exactly what it wants, and it'll stop. Oh, wow. So they really are intelligent. Are. So that tells you something about their intelligence. That's right. <laughs> uh, training, I've, I've got to tell you this. You'll appreciate this, Charlie. Training mules is a lot different from training horses. When you're fooling with mules, you have to have a lot of patience. You have to be willing to compromise, and you can't always get perfection. You just have to work with them. You take and what you get. That's right. And I always say that every good Baptist ought to own one mule in his life <laughs> because they learned a lot of patience and how to compromise and that everything didn't have to be perfect. Oh, that's a good one there. I hope the, I hope the preacher's listening. <laughs> And we won't have to have a committee. Just say, <laughs> That's right. We, we wouldn't have near as many committees, they, and they, would, <laughs> they wouldn't meet near as long <laughs> because we'd learn right quick we had to get this over with no, and come to a compromise. <laughs> oh, that, that is wonderful, Howard. And while you're thinking about that, uh, Dakota, um, Coda could be short for Dakota, and I kind of thought that was where it was coming from when you first told me about that. But uh, tell us about that birth again. That was so interesting, Howard, um, about when the foal is born, about the hooves. Foals, foals are born. The presentation on the foal is, is feet first, head first. And these, when these foals are born, their hooves are real soft. They're almost sponge-like, and that's so that there's no tissue tears or anything during the birth process that would injure the, mo the mother. As soon as they hit the ground in a very short time and the, exposed to the air, those hooves begin to harden up. What a miracle. It is. Uh, yeah, no. the spirit's down. Oh. How beautiful. Oh. Okay. Howard, tell us about the mules we're with right now. This is this is Mally, Maddie. She's she's a Molly mule. The term Molly is used to describe a female mule. So she's a she's a Molly mule. Uh, her dad's name her dad's name was Matt Dillon, so she got the name Maddie. This is this is Tuff directly behind me. He's a he's a big old boy. He's a male. They are brother and sister. They are half brother and sister. Yeah, because um. um they have the same mother. Same mother, different father. And and this is spirit. 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 Oh, you are Spirit's so beautiful. Spirit's a male. A male mules are called John mules. Oh. I love that. Oh, you're beautiful. Look at that. Spirit's about eight. eight? Ten. Okay. Gosh. Larry, this is nothing. That's what is nothing. <laughs> it'll get a little bit longer, but 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 it'll never get like we we're talking about the horses. So what we tend to do, what we tend to do is roach them off, and, and we tend to, we tend to cut that off. Yeah, we we try to keep it from getting long. <laughs> oh, how sweet you are! <laughs> you are just beautiful. Now this one's Maddie beside us. This, this is, is tough. Tough, tough. Yeah, this is old tough. This is Maddie. Maddie. Okay. 
Oh, my goodness, and spirit that you had up there. Where did you uh, buy that Mustang? It was from the U.S. government. Uh, the wild Mustang. I went to a, to, an, to an adoption near Decatur, Alabama, and and acquired her up there. Okay. And, and so the government, um, you said that they take those around the country. The government has a has a program to to take some of the some of the mustangs off of the range, so the range doesn't become overstocked. They try to control the population. So when they remove select animals from the from the wild herds, then they offer those animals up to to the public, so most of them wind up with a good home. That's the intent of the program: is to those animals that they have that they take off the range into to a good environment. Well, they certainly found a good home. Mine got lucky when she landed with me, cause she eats good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Holly! I love them, love them, love them. I've never been uh, this close. The, I've never been close to a horse until my son took riding lessons, and that's the first time I realized they had eyelashes. <laughs> they sure do. You are just a beauty. But now I, I'm special. The purpose of these eyelashes being long like that is so that if that eye got close to something, that, that eyelash comes in contact with it, and that eye will close so they don't, get to, they don't oh. damage their eyes. So they actually serve a purpose. <laughs> Now, Spirit, oh. Spirit is not an albino, but he's pretty close. He has the, he has a lot of the characteristics, but the pink skin. But you can see he has a little black, black color. And he even has a black stripe in his hoof. See that black, and the otherwise white hooves. He's got that one dark stripe in it. Oh, I see. Now, so what color was the mother? Black. Oh my gosh. Black. And do you know the color of the father? He was a black and white spotted donkey. And she was solid black and he came out <laughs> solid white. So that's just that's just one of those things that happens. That's it's just nature, isn't it? It's nature and and it has a lot to do with the with the process of a hybrid. You just you just never know exactly what kind of color combinations you might get. Well, I'm really just partial to spirit because he's white. <laughs> Spirit's a little bit too fat. There you go. Maddie, <laughs> Maddie, that's okay. It's okay, Maddie. <laughs> oh, so Maddie was protecting Spirit. Yeah, you can put him up there. Yeah. You can put him up. I'll just get Maddie over here and hold him, hold, hold her out of the way. That's a <laughs> that that's a pretty good indication of how of how docile and gentle that little mule is to have that dog walk around on his back. That is, he's he's never had that happen to him before, so that's something totally new. I, I'm even surprised myself that he's standing there so nicely. <laughs> I guess the mom's just got the charm. She's just charmed him into that. <laughs> there's some of the there there's some of the longhorns over there. That's my herd bull there. His name is Overkill. That black and white bull going down the fence. Cowgirls Overkill is his name. A couple of calves down there. There's the rest of them way down there. Howard Spirit is small in stature, more like the uh, mining mules. He is. He, he's he's probably close to the size that most of the mining mules were. He, he's obviously a lot fatter because they were working a lot harder for a living, and he's just out here living the living the life. Oh, but Howard um, Graham, he's eating very well. <laughs> he's he's eating he's eating very well. But he's typical he's typical of the size that they would use, and some some of them might have been a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. but he's fairly typical in size to the to the mules that they used underground. Oh, Spirit, I just do love you. It's just fun to pet you. As, as <laughs> Howard, would you consider changing? Howard, would you consider changing the name to Maggie? 
Well, we'd be get we'd be giving a male a female name. I don't, oh, I don't know if we right. could get away with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of dark in here, Judy, yeah. you know? I know that's when we're taking pictures when they're going. I get frustrated because my camera takes so long. Uh -huh. Here at the Charter International Dateline facility, scientists have one foot in today and one foot literally in tomorrow to bring Charter customers the latest thing. Oh, it's Casual Friday over here. Like switching your phone service from AT&T, Verizon, or CenturyLink, Charter guarantees to cut your phone bill in half. Speaking of cutting things in half, where's the rest of those pants? Do you need furniture? Sides Furniture and Dora has incredible deals for you. Does your furniture make people say, wow? Sides Furniture has the North Shore Collection, specially priced just for you. This group has a rich traditional design and exquisite details that come together to create the ultimate in grand style. And all upholstery features luxurious top quality leather. Select your new furniture today and save big by purchasing at Sides Furniture in Dora. 110% guaranteed low price or visit them online at SidesFurniture.com.